y'all! Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Julie and I primarily make content surrounding topics such as music, makeup, as well as mental health. Today's video is mental health related. I wanted to talk about this awesome DBT skill that I recently learned in therapy and have been working on. I feel it's a fairly simple skill and a good place to start if you are interested in doing DBT. So before I get into it, I'll tell you a little bit about DBT. So DBT stands for Dialectical Behavioral Therapy. It is the cousin of CBT. It has similar concepts to CBT, but it's approached in a different way. And it's more so evidence-based to treat borderline personality disorder, although it can treat a variety of mental health conditions. And I feel personally that it could be beneficial to almost anybody just because of the way that it's presented. To me, I feel like CBT can come across as a little robotic and invalidating and DBT approaches correcting cognitive distortions in a more trauma-informed way. So let me explain what this looks like. So I explained that DBT is dialectical behavioral therapy, right? So what is dialectics? Specifically speaking, dialectics is where we have two paradoxal statements, two paradoxal realities, two aspects that just don't make sense together, that just don't go together. Or at least that's what we think, especially as black and white thinkers, which this makes sense because one of the major symptoms of BPD is black and white thinking. However, that's very common for most of us with mental health conditions anyways. This is how simple this skill is. This is how easy it is for you to access this skill. I'm gonna give you two statements and I'm going to separate them with the word, but, and then I'm going to say the two statements again and separate it with the word and, and I'm gonna talk about the difference in how saying these statements out loud makes me feel. Thinking about CBT, an example that's very common might be a belief. One of the statements can be a belief, like, I'm stupid, right? A lot of us feel that way, it's a sucky feeling. So my first statement is, I'm stupid. If I were to do CBT, CBT is all about looking at the evidence. So I might say, I did well in school, or I'm a bright student, or something along the lines of that. So let's go with this example and see how this plays out. I'm stupid, but I got good grades in school. That but just doesn't do it for me. I'm trying to validate myself, but I'm separating all of these things with but and it's really getting in the way. And I never even realized I do this. I actually was editing the Get Ready With Me that should be up Monday. And I say but, cause I'm an emotion mind in that video, I say but in between all of my statements and just invalidate myself left and right. So let's switch it up, okay? I'm stupid and I got good grades in school. It feels really weird because it just doesn't click that it logically makes sense to say something this way. But do you see how I kind of smiled and my brain stopped for a second and was like, whoa, what, what was that? What's going on? So I want to give you some more examples. I feel examples are the best way to practice this skill, but it really is just so simple. Whenever you catch yourself saying but in between two paradoxal statements to fight it. This is one that I've been saying a lot because as many of you may know, I have an unspecified eating disorder that I am working on treating. I value my health and I'm ruining my health with an eating disorder. So <laughs> it feels really uncomfortable, but despite what's going on with my mental health condition, that being the eating disorder, that value that I have, that I value my health and wellness, is still there, it's still valid, it still holds some truths. So we have these two paradoxal statements that both still hold some truth. I hope you're still following me here. Let me think of another one that is common. I feel like everyone hates me, but at least I have friends. Nah, it's just kind of weak. Like, it's a good way to start to challenge yourself, but that and just solidifies it, right? I feel like everyone hates me and I have some friends. 
doesn't take away from the feeling that you feel like you hate yourself and that sucks and that's valid and that's okay and it's okay to feel that way but you're still challenging it without invalidating any of those feelings that are coming about. So far I've given you an example of a belief about ourselves that is negative like I'm stupid which if you suffer from anxiety, depression, whatever it may be, that might be unfortunately a belief that you have that you hopefully are able to work on. Let's move forward to another mental health condition this could be helpful for which is social anxiety. This one's funny. I feel really uncomfortable around people but I want to see my friends. I don't feel as empowered with the but. I feel uncomfortable socializing with people and I want to see my friends. That and just gives my brain this sort of weird spark where I jump to, yeah, I still want to see my friends despite it being uncomfortable and difficult. And I just, I don't know what it is about this dialectics that just makes it so humanizing, validating, etc. But I've struggled to access CBT because cognitive distortions and addressing those in a very methodical way sometimes feels invalidating and I don't feel like is as trauma informed as doing this strategy that being dialectics. So I'm really excited. I've been working on this skill. It's super cool. And I'm going to try to leave you with one more example. So let's see. Oh, body image. This is a big one. And I've been working on this too. I hate my body, but my body carries me through everything I do. Doesn't feel as powerful. Let's try it with and. I hate my body. And my body carries me through everything I do. Doesn't take away from that feeling, doesn't take away from that struggle. That may be a deep hatred that's come from trauma for many of you, right? And so this is a trauma-informed approach because it's not taking away any of your traumatic experiences. It's not invalidating any of your pain. Hopefully that statement's still there, but we have this other statement that pushes us in the right direction, in my opinion. Now, I'm one human being and you're another, and this may not work for you. You might watch this and go, what the heck, this is dumb. I encourage you to try it for a little bit, and if you don't like it, it's okay to move on, but I just like to share free resources and coping skills, and since this was helpful for me, I know and hope that it will be helpful for someone out there. Hopefully, some of my viewers will get a good experience out of this. And that's it. This is just a quick little video. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed it. I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel as well. You can follow me on all of my social medias, which will be down here. My Instagram is Julie underscore counseling. My Twitter is Julie counseling with no underscore. My coaching page is Julie underscore coaching as I'm now a certified personal trainer. And my Facebook page will be linked down below as well. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye guys.